So today on ADG Pro, we're going to be going over the cheat codes in both the original Descent and Descent 2. Now, I already know what you're thinking. <sighs> cheat codes? Really? Really? You're going to burn a whole video just talking about cheat codes? And yes, I am. Because they can be quite a bit more interesting than you may realize. Now, the funny thing is, cheat codes typically weren't intended for consumers to use on their own accord in the early days of gaming. They were put there primarily as debugging tools so that different aspects of a game could be tested in a minimal amount of time. And one of the best examples of this is in the NES port of Akari Warriors, where there's a cheat code to do a level select, but it's kinda... oh... <laughs> Just look at it. Just the act of trying to input a code this long would be insane, at least in terms of debugging. So it's more likely the code was intended to be input automatically by a device plugged into the NES through a controller port. It's not the only example of this, just probably one of the more infamous ones. Although occasionally, cheats are put into a game on purpose. Now, the original Bubble Bobble arcade machines have a code that you need to input to put the game into super mode in order to see the real ending, because beating the final boss with two players alive is actually not enough. Now, this code was cryptically hidden in a number of bonus rooms that you discover by progressing through the game without losing any lives. Suffice to say, it took one heck of a player to discover this stuff. On the PC side of things though, with a full keyboard at the programmer's disposal, codes are often words or phrases, as we're going to see in a moment. Again, there's some infamous examples of this, with Alien Breed on the Amiga having some eclectic phrases for their cheat codes, most of which I don't think I can say without YouTube flagging the video. Now, the reason I never mentioned this in my review of the DOS version of Alien Breed is because they were almost all stripped out of the DOS port, save for one, which ultimately got changed to be far less rude. But anyways, back to Descent. The cheat codes present here are definitely more intended for debugging purposes than for making the game easier for people to play, and it's clear that the Parallax software guys weren't too keen on letting people cheat too easily, as you can't even use any of the cheat codes without first typing in a code to enable cheats. Gabba Gabba Hey. Now, the funny thing about this code is I always associated it with a Simpsons episode where Homer eats some stupidly spicy chili peppers and, as he starts tripping out, Ned Flanders actually says this to him. But that episode debuted two years after Descent came out. I did some further research and found out that the phrase Gabba Gabba Hey is actually associated with the Ramones and their song Pinhead from their Leave Home album released in 1977. Even further down the rabbit hole, the Ramones' inspiration for the phrase was from a scene from the 1932 horror movie Freaks, where it was Gobble instead of Gaba. So yeah, the code for enabling cheats and descent owes itself to a movie made 63 years prior. Once cheats are enabled, you'll find lots of codes that you'd expect. Permanent invulnerability is Racer X. Getting a cloaking power up is Guile. Getting maxed weapons and ammunition is Big Red. Getting all the keys is Mitzi. And typing in Bruin gives you an extra life and can be typed in as many times as you want. Now would be a good time to point out that Descent figures if you're cheating, you don't care about the score. So the moment you input a cheat code, your score is reset to zero and any attempts to get points simply shows the word cheater instead of a proper score value. However, let's get into some of the more interesting codes now. For people who like to go totally OP on their games, there's the code PORGIES, which I believe is a reference to an album released by the experimental rock band named When People Were Shorter and Lived Near the Water. Yeah, that's seriously the name of the band. But in any case, this code is similar to the All Weapons code, except it ramps your ammo limits up and pretty much quadruples all of your firing rates, allowing you to fire off an insane number of shots. I'm guessing this code was mostly to help test entity and sprite limits. Another curious code is Astral. It's not entirely clear what this code is doing at first, until you accidentally run into a closed door and pass straight through it. Yeah, all this code does is make it so you can pass through doors. But also secret doors, transparent walls, and even the exit door, which upon doing so, automatically triggers the level end sequence. Or if you want to actually start the end level sequence without going through the exit door, use the code POBOYS, which I believe is a food reference if I'm not mistaken. 
One of the codes which cements the debugging nature of these codes is pletch, which always needs to be followed by three numerals. Now what this does is makes it so that anytime you shoot a 3D object other than the level itself, basically any of the enemy robots, that object will have its texture reference set to whatever ID you specified. Now this would be a fast way to test to make sure that the texturing engine is working properly and that the references are correct. Now using this code with a texture ID of 999 disables it. Well, that's actually another important point, is that many of the codes which have an on state can be disabled by typing the code a second time. The two codes are present for testing things at much higher speeds than they normally be capable of. Lunacy causes robots to move much faster, though they'll fire less often to compensate, while Buggin has the same effect for the player. Now, you can also prevent enemy robots from attacking entirely by using the code Ahimsa which I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced. Basically, it's a concept from Hinduism where the word literally translates to the opposite of causing harm or injury. The level warp code is Farmer Joe, which is probably a reference to something, but I couldn't figure out to what exactly. Now, this lets you warp to any level in the game by entering the level number into a window which pops up. There's also a very intriguing code, Flash, which places a string of energy power-ups between you and where the level exit is. Now, the fact that the game can even do this automatically is very impressive from a programming standpoint, but when you understand how Descent's level structures work, it suddenly makes a lot more sense how this is even possible, as every level is literally made up of cubes of any shape or size. Thus the game just iterates through these cubes from the exit until it hits the cube that the player is in, and then it just adds energy power-ups lined up between every joining cube face. These last two codes, however, are very curious. Twilight and Scourge. A Twilight resets your shields to 100 units exactly, which seems almost pointless when you have access to an invulnerability cheat, while Scourge gives you all of the weapons and ammo you could have if you were playing the shareware version of the game. As far as I'm aware, there are no cheat codes in the shareware version, but maybe I've been wrong about that this whole time. I barely played much of the shareware version before getting the full game, so I'm not well versed in its limitations. Now one last thing with Descent is that if you have cheats enabled and go into the auto map, pressing Alt F will fill in the entire map in an instant. The only trick is that because Descent never had a power-up for revealing the map, using this key combo to see the full map doesn't make it clear where you have and haven't been yet. But yeah, that makes up all the cheat codes for Descent. But before we move on to Descent 2, one of my Patreon supporters, Parafine, had a question about all of this asking, were there any cheats that would have negative effects? Like putting in IDDQD into later games might kill you. Well, we'll get into that, but first, let's get into Descent 2 and type in Gabba Gabba Hey to enable cheats and... Uh, that doesn't look right. Maybe it's just saying we only have one shield and energy unit and we can actually... So yeah, apparently Parallax Software wasn't joking around with their cheat codes. Descent 2 has a bunch of cheat codes that all have the same effect punishing you for inputting them. Though, there's not as many as you might think, as some people claim that trying to input any of the Descent 1 codes will trigger this, and maybe that was true in earlier versions, but with a fully patched Descent 2, virtually all of the Descent 1 codes simply don't have any effect at all. Though interestingly enough, the version number of the game really does kind of matter. Many of the codes I'm going to show come in two flavors, one of which works in earlier versions of the game, the other of which works in later versions. And in all but one case, trying to use the old version of the code in a later version of the game has the same one shield, one energy punishment. But yeah, you don't have to enable cheats in Descent 2, so let's just kick things off with some of the basics, like Invulnerability, which is Almighty in later versions, and Zingerman's in early versions, All Weapons, which is Honest Bob in later versions, Motherload in early versions, All Accessories, like the Headlight and Energy Converter, which is Ollie Falafel in all versions, All Keys, which is Al Groove in later versions, and Curry Goat in early versions, and the level warp code, which was originally Whamazoon, but then Free Space in later versions. And as most of you are probably aware, after Descent 2, Parallax Software branched into two companies, Outrage, which went on to make Descent 3, and Volition, which went on to make the Descent Free Space games. So that choice of cheat code there is likely related in some way. 
Beyond those codes though, we do have some other interesting ones. And because of the issues with having too high a frame rate in the original Descent, they added a code to measure and display the frame rate here, simply called Frame Time. There's also a code in place to test the new weapon reflection mechanics, Dudaboo in later versions, Erica Ann in early versions, which causes all weapons to bounce off of all surfaces, which can get a little ridiculous with things like the Helix Rifle, or especially the Vulcan and Gauss weapons where you don't actually see the projectiles. Another weapon testing code is Leapin' Lizard for later versions, and Eat Angelos for early versions, which adds homing locks to almost all of your weapons. Though I've noted some weapons, like the Helix Rifle, either don't function properly with this, or some may not actually lock on without being aimed very specifically, unlike homing missiles and mega missiles and such which lock onto targets with zero effort. There's unfortunately no overpowering weapons code like in the original Descent, though there's also no full map key combination, though there is a code now instead which gives you the full map power up. Rocker Girl, missing a couple vowels for later versions, or Joshua Akira for early versions. And one code that's kind of obvious in what it does is simply Godzilla and works in all versions. This code literally makes it so that just touching an enemy destroys it. Which is kind of funny when the thief bot goes to swipe something and all of a sudden you hear its death scream. Though, actually, fun fact about the thief bot and the way these cheats are programmed, when you toggle the invincibility cheat, what you're actually doing is setting yourself up with an invulnerability power-up with a virtually inexhaustible time limit. And since it's still technically a power-up, the thief bot can steal your permanent invulnerability. Now, if you hunt down the thief bot and get it back, since it'll be transformed into a typical invulnerability power-up, that means it's only going to last 30 seconds when you pick it up. Now granted, you could always just use the code again. Now, if you just want to clear the level ASAP, there's a code for that. Del Shift B, which blows the reactor, gives you all the power-ups found throughout the level, and warps you into the cube right in front of the exit tunnel. Now, curiously, there's a second code which does the exact same thing. F-O-P-K-J-E-W-A. I'm not quite sure what that's in reference to, but I find it interesting that both codes work which suggests one of them was the original code and was supposed to be converted into a punishment code, but wasn't for whatever reason. Or perhaps you just want to make the enemies harmless. In that case, use the code image space. And yep, those robots aren't going to be much of a threat anymore. Now, there's no code to do the opposite, but there is a code which just erases all enemy robots from the level entirely. Spaniard. An interesting thing about the Spaniard code, if you put it in while there's no enemy robots present, it'll attempt to erase a boss if there's a boss present. But if there's no boss present either, it'll erase any and all guide bots in the level. Speaking of guide bot, this little helper got some codes dedicated to him. For instance, if he ever wanted another, just type in Help Vishnu, which is another Hinduism reference. And voila, another guide bot has come to aid you. Uh, granted, all they do is fire flares, which isn't really very useful in combat, so if you ever wanted your guide bot to become a million times more deadly, just type in the code GOWINGNUT, and now your seemingly defenseless robotic buddy will be armed to the teeth with mega missiles and other surprises. Also, guide bots are not afraid to use these things, so keep your distance if you're not invulnerable. Actually, you may also notice that this code changes guide bot's name to WINGNUT. Now, a commonly forgotten feature in Descent 2 is the ability to name your guidebot, and the Wingnut reference is actually to a contest Parallax Software was holding for naming the guidebot, and Wingnut was the winning name of said contest. Now, curiously, Descent 2 even has a secret command line parameter. Entering the command line parameter hyphen super high res enables rendering the game at 1024 by 768 and 1280 by 1024 screen resolutions. Though, as you can see from my frame rate here, that goes about as well as you can expect. And actually, I'm kind of impressed DOSBox is even handling this as well as it is, as I'm pretty sure I had even worse frame rates trying this on my Pentium 120 system. These last two codes, though, I'm not exactly sure about. Now, typing in the code bittersweet turns off the game's perspective correction, or rather, does something odd to it, causing any walls that you're close to to look very warped. The effect is more noticeable when you're moving, but since it only really seems to make a difference at close range, it's not as trippy as the text when using the code which have you believe. 
Now this last code has to do with playing the game with the render window scaled down, which you would do on an underpowered system, where typing in pig farmer does this. Bye John. So there you have it. All the codes for Descent and Descent 2. Or rather, all the codes I could get working. Now, supposedly there's a go-go robot code in Descent 2, but I couldn't get it to do anything whatsoever, and even tried various variations of it to no avail. And I've noted that many lists of Descent and Descent 2 codes online are either incomplete or inaccurate, so I've made my own fully tested list available for everyone to download from the link in the video description. It may still be incomplete, and if it is, I can edit it later, but as far as I'm aware, I've got them all there. But just as a point aside, you're watching me run through the first level of Descent now without cheats enabled on the Hotshot difficulty selection. The fact of the matter is, we're all playing games to have fun, which means whether you use cheat codes or not really does depend on what it is about the game which is fun to you, and using cheat codes to enjoy the game is not in and of itself a bad thing. It's only a bad thing if you're ruining the game for someone else in the process, or if you're not having fun when you're cheating. For me, I prefer playing games without cheat codes, but I don't mind using said codes when I just want to mess around or glitch the game out or such. Or heck, as an even better example, I leave cheats enabled when I'm playing modded Minecraft, but I almost never use them except when the game cheats me, either from some glitch or something which destroys tons of progress, which is always a risk given all the mods that are all going at once. This enables me to play the game on my terms, and that's ultimately what cheating in a game is about. If there's no competitive aspects involved, or you don't mind missing out on the competitive aspects, then no one has any right to force you to stop. Not even the people who made the game and left those codes in there in the first place. Anywho, that'll be all for this episode of ADG Pro. Next week will be a filler, and I have something interesting planned. As some of you may or may not know, I don't actually know how to touch type. Yet despite that, I can still type at around 60 words per minute with 100% accuracy, even though it doesn't seem like it when you're watching Shovelware Diggers. So how is that even possible? Well, stay tuned for next Saturday, and I assure you it'll all make total sense once you witness my unusual and unique method of typing. Thanks for watching everyone, and extra special thanks to everyone supporting me on Patreon. Here's just a small selection of you guys.